Hi guys, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. So for a video in the near future, uh, I need some ammonia for the purpose of uh, isolating nitrogen gas. And uh, the ammonia that you can get uh, where I live is not very concentrated at all. I've had a look, you know, like hardware stores, supermarkets and stuff, and the best you can get is around one to two percent this is just one percent ammonia and it's very impure it's got like all soaps in it and so i thought i bought some ammonium sulfate fertilizer and i thought we'd have a go at extracting ammonia from the ammonium sulfate hopefully um i'll be able to get a higher concentration of ammonia than i can well buy anyway now there are two methods that i know of that we're going to have a go uh first of all we're going to try, we're going to make some calcium hydroxide and then we're just going to react that with the ammonium sulfate, uh, form a precipitate of calcium sulfate which is highly insoluble in water and the ammonium ion will react with the hydroxide forming ammonia and water. So we'll be left with a pretty pure, I'm hoping, solution of ammonia in water and then we'll be able to filter off the calcium sulfate precipitate that we'll get. In order to make the calcium hydroxide, we're going to start off with this garden lime, which uh, I think it's got content of calcium carbonate. Uh, first of all, with that, we're going to react it with some vinegar or acetic acid. And then once we've reacted the calcium carbonate with the acetic acid, we'll have a solution of uh, calcium acetate which uh, will have all the impurities from uh, the garden lime in it which we'll just filter off and we'll be left with a hopefully pure solution of calcium acetate and then to make the calcium hydroxide which is pretty insoluble we'll just add some sodium hydroxide to it and that should precipitate out our calcium hydroxide which we can then go on to react with the ammonium sulfate to make ammonia. Now the second method to make ammonia from this uh, which we'll use if the first method doesn't work or if we don't make enough that way uh, is just simply reacting the ammonium sulfate with some sodium hydroxide. Same as before, the ammonium ion will react with the hydroxide ion to form ammonia and water which will give us our ammonia solution uh, and the sulfate will uh, it'll still remain in solution with the sodium, it'll be a sodium sulfate solution but we should be able to cool it down if we make it concentrated enough uh, and we'll be able to crystallize out most of the sodium sulfate from that. But we'll start off with the calcium hydroxide, calcium carbonate to calcium acetate, calcium hydroxide to ammonia, and we'll see how that goes. All right, so here we've got about 50 grams of that very impure uh, calcium carbonate. I reckon it's around 50% uh, purity. So the first thing we're going to do to convert uh, the calcium carbonate into calcium acetate uh, is we're going to add some cleaning vinegar. This will hopefully have a higher concentration of vinegar than regular cooking vinegar. So I'll just add this very slowly now because it will bubble and froth up. So just oh, add a really small amount and you can see how it all bubbles. That'll be the calcium carbonate reacting with the acid. All right, so hopefully I've added an excess of vinegar uh, in order to get it to all react with the calcium carbonate. And I'm just gonna leave that for a while to make sure it all does react. And what I'll do now is filter off all of the impurities and then maybe with all of the impurities left in here, I'll add some more vinegar just to make sure that all of the calcium carbonate has reacted. So while that is all filtering over here, uh, what I've made here or I'm making hasn't quite dissolved yet is we've got some sodium carbonate solution right here and so the leftover kind of solids will add this solution and what that'll do is react with the acetic acid so that'll neutralize that and all the calcium acetate it will precipitate out as calcium carbonate uh, which is what we started with anyway so we can just kind of chuck this really easily so we just add a little bit of this sodium carbonate solution and we should see that it bubbles a little bit so that's a good sign it means it's working and that should neutralize everything that we've made so I've got the uh, calcium acetate solution in this bottle here 
Uh, it didn't filter very well. There's some really tiny solids in there that I'm hoping will settle out. And what I've done is I've just put a little hole inside the bottom that I've taped over. And then once everything's settled out, what I'll do is remove the tape and then all of the uh, clearer solution should just run out. So I'll leave this to settle for a while and then we'll come back when that's done. I think it has all settled out. You can kind of see down the bottom there all of the solids. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully pick it up and try to um, take off that tape and let it all leak into this beaker over here. So that's looking good, much clearer. Alright, this is looking a lot clearer, so that's good. Uh, what we'll do now is we'll add sodium hydroxide to this and that'll um, precipitate out calcium hydroxide, hopefully. Okay, so as we add the sodium hydroxide solution, we should see calcium hydroxide precipitating out just there. Very nice. Nice. So after having it settle overnight, uh, we've got some more sodium hydroxide solution here. And just to check that we have precipitated all of the calcium as calcium hydroxide, we'll add a few drops of this. And you'll notice that there's no precipitation. So we have reacted all of the calcium and we've got all of the calcium hydroxide that we can get. So now I'm going to attempt to uh, decant off the top layer of this so that we just get left with a small amount of water with our calcium hydroxide in the bottom. It's pretty well decanted off, uh, I reckon. Uh, I might leave this for another, I don't know, few hours, see if I can get it to settle out anymore because 125 milliliters or so is a bit more volume than I was expecting. I was hoping to get it down to kind of around 50 milliliters, but we'll see how well we go. With the stuff that I decanted off, uh, this should be a mixture of sodium acetate and sodium hydroxide because I added an excess of sodium hydroxide uh, and a little bit of calcium hydroxide in there. So what I'm going to do is just add some more acetic acid in order to neutralize the sodium hydroxide and make uh, turn calcium hydroxide into calcium acetate which is a much safer form of calcium. So now that that's all done we have around 100 milliliters of water with a lot of calcium hydroxide suspended in it and I've just weighed out around 30 grams of uh, ammonium sulfate. Uh, this will react with the calcium hydroxide to form ammonia and calcium sulfate. Uh, hopefully uh, with the 20 or so grams of calcium hydroxide that I've got in here, uh, 30 grams should react more or less nearly fully with that forming the ammonia and then we should just be able to filter off, or we'll hopefully be able to filter off all of the calcium sulfate. All right, so as I add it, I don't expect the reaction to be particularly vigorous, but I'll just add a little bit anyway. That should start dissolving in the water there. And then because um, calcium hydroxide has a very low solubility, uh, it should react pretty slowly. So I might leave it overnight once I've added all the rest of that. So as that reacts, what we should get at the end is around about a 5 to 10% solution of ammonia. Of course, we don't know how much calcium carbonate we started with at the very start of the reaction, so we don't really know. Uh, but we should get, yes, that 5 to 10% solution of ammonia and some calcium sulfate. I'll tell you what, it definitely smells like ammonia. Whoa. It does very much smell of ammonia, but that's good because that means it is working. Quite a bit quicker than I thought really. So yes, I might have said before, I'm going to leave this overnight to see if we can get it to fully react and then uh, we'll try to filter off the rest of that calcium sulfate. Well actually after watching it for a minute or so, um, it seems like it is actually already done. Uh, you can see that all the calcium sulfate has separated out uh, really well really quickly. Uh, the calcium hydroxide definitely wasn't doing that before, wasn't that quick. Uh, I think that's probably because the uh, calcium sulfate is a lot denser than the calcium hydroxide, but I think that's looking good. I'm still going to leave it overnight just to see if we can get that calcium sulfate to uh, settle out really well, and then 
hopefully we'll be able to just decant the uh, ammonia off the top if we can't filter the rest of it off. The only thing that worries me at this stage is, I don't know if you can see on the bottom there, but there is a lot of that ammonium sulfate pellets that are still uh, on the bottom of the beaker, which just means that uh, if the reaction is done, like I'm pretty sure it is, uh, it means that there wasn't as much calcium hydroxide as I thought there was initially. But that's all right, that means we've just got a weaker concentration of ammonia. So it's all now settled out really well. Uh, I've got the beaker tilted over just a little bit with this stir rod here in order to try to get all of the calcium sulfate to settle down the other side and then I'll kind of tip the beaker back and then I might be able to get a little bit more of the ammonia. Instead of decanting it off like last time, I'm just going to be using a pipette to try to get all of that ammonia solution uh, into another beaker. So I'll get that done now. And then we've got 80 milliliters or so of our ammonia solution. Uh, I've got no way of checking how concentrated it is, uh, but it does smell a lot, lot more than the 1.1% uh, ammonium hydroxide that I have. So at least we've done better than that. Uh, it is going to be pretty impure because um, if you remember, we added a fair bit of ammonium sulfate uh, to try to react with all the calcium hydroxide, but there wasn't enough calcium hydroxide to react with all of it. And so uh, we are going to have quite a bit of ammonium sulfate dissolved in there, but that's all right. That won't uh, change anything for what I'm going to use it for. Anyway, I'll see if I can uh, filter the rest of this, get any more of our ammonia solution. While that's filtering now, just to prove that we do actually have ammonia here, uh, I've got an open container of hydrochloric acid. You can see that when I bring the beaker of ammonia close to the opening of the hydrochloric acid, that we will start to get some uh, ammonium chloride fumes. I don't know if you can really see there, but there we are. Uh, that would be the ammonia vapor reacting with the hydrogen chloride vapor to form ammonium chloride, uh, which exists as a really, really fine powder, which is the vapor that you can see rising into the air. So finally, after filtering, we have around 105 to 110 milliliters of our ammonia solution. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it straight into a container, a uh, sealed container, because it really does stink quite a bit. All right, so there we are. Uh, I could purify this ammonia just by putting it into a distillation apparatus, uh, bringing it to a boil that should uh, get the ammonia vapor to escape and then feed the ammonia gas through uh, into another container of water. But as it is, uh, it's not actually going to affect my use for it. So I think we're just going to stick with this impure ammonia that we've got now. Now while we have made ammonia here, uh, it is not quite enough for the purpose that I'm going to use it for in a future video. Uh, for that, I think we're going to have to make some more. So. What we're going to do is we're going to use the second method that I talked about at the start of the video. We're going to react uh, sodium hydroxide with uh, some of the ammonium sulfate fertilizer to generate our ammonia and then we will freeze or we'll, we'll crystallize out all of the resulting uh, sodium sulfate. So here we've got around 45 grams worth of sodium hydroxide which I'm going to very slowly uh, as to not let it heat up too much add to this 300 milliliters of water here. Uh, this should be enough sodium hydroxide to make around 20 grams of ammonia, which will end up in solution. So now that that's all dissolved, I've got a little bit over 75 grams of ammonium sulfate, which I'm going to add in very slowly because I think that this reaction might be. No, no, it's looking all right. I'll add just a little bit more. The ammonium sulfate should now react with the sodium hydroxide solution forming water, ammonia and sodium sulfate. So I'll just slowly add this over a long period of time and then we should have our uh, ammonia solution contaminated by 
uh, sodium sulfate. So now that that's all finished reacting, uh, you can see the volume has increased considerably. Uh, but right now I'm just going to go and put this in the fridge and hopefully all of the sodium sulfate, well nearly all of the sodium sulfate, should uh, crystallize out which will then filter off and we'll be left with our ammonia solution. It's got a little bit cloudy which uh, I didn't really expect but I think that's just the impurities of the uh, ammonium sulfate so hopefully we'll be able to filter those out uh, anyway. Alright so it didn't actually end up working we didn't manage to crystallize out any uh, sodium sulfate from the solution. Uh, I thought we would but maybe that's just because uh, sodium sulfate is more soluble in ammonia solutions or something. I don't really know. Uh, anyway, I'll filter this off and then I think we'll just add it to that. Once again, the impurity of um, sodium sulfate in there isn't actually going to affect the uh, use that I've got for it. Uh, so it's good to go as is. And if you really needed pure ammonia, like I said before, you could uh, bring it to a boil and then all the, well not all of it, but most of the ammonia gas would uh, escape from solution and you'd be able to bubble that gas through some distilled water or something in order to get some pure ammonia solution. But this is all good, I'm pretty sure. Actually, never mind, uh, as I poured it into the filtering that I'm doing, uh, all of the sodium sulfate has crystallized on the paper towel that I'm using to filter it. So obviously we've got a super saturated solution here. Uh, it's a little bit weird because I did scratch the side of the beaker with the glass rod and like there's some kind of gravelly particles like impurities of the fertilizer in the bottom there so I did expect it to crystallize out but obviously uh, it didn't. And there we go, uh, 200 to 250 milliliters worth of ammonia that is has less impurities than it did before. I'll just go ahead and add that to our container and there you go that's it see you later